Okay. Welcome, everybody. Um, so I'll do uh, an introduction in English and also nachher dann in Deutsch. Uh, stelle ich einfach auch nochmal alles vor. Um, falls es irgendwann Fragen gibt, ich versuche den Vortrag von Armin Nawabi auch so halbwegs äh, simultan äh, von, von Englisch auf Deutsch auch zu übersetzen, so dass man dem zumindest inhaltlich folgen kann. Um, I'll switch between uh, German and English. So first of all, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Stefan Söndle. Um, I'm a member of the Düsseldorfer Aufklärungsdienst and I will guide you through the event today. Mein Name ist Stefan Söndle. <lacht> ich bin vom Düsseldorfer Aufklärungsdienst um, und werde so ein bisschen durch den Abend führen. Der Düsseldorfer Aufklärungsdienst ähm, ist die Regionalgruppe der Giordano Bruno Stiftung, ähm, der Denkfabrik für Humanismus und Aufklärung. Ähm, der Düsseldorfer Aufklärungsdienst macht seit 2010 äh, Veranstaltungen wie diese hier ähm, über Themen wie Philosophie, Wissenschaft oder auch Religionskritik. Ähm, wenn Sie Interesse an weiteren Events wie diesen haben, Sie können sich in unseren Newsletter eintragen. Ähm, natürlich können Sie auch einfach eine Mitgliedschaft beantragen, die es dort vorne dann auch an unserem Büchertisch gibt. Ähm, oder auch Flyer und äh, weitere Bücher besorgen. Ähm, es gibt eine Bar, wo Sie sich mit Getränken versorgen können, die dort hinten ist. Ähm, back to English. Um, we are uh, the Düsseldorf Aufklärungsdienst, the regional group of the Giordano Bruno Stiftung, uh, think tank for humanism and enlightenment. Since 2010 we organize events like this on topics of religion, science and philosophy. Um, if you're interested in other talks like this, um, you can go to our book table, um, pick up some flyers, some books or enter your uh, data into our newsletter. And there's also a bar uh, where you can get some drinks. So, uh, of course we would very much appreciate it, um, since we're uh, uh, a charity, if you would like to become a member or donate some money or something like that. Um, and uh, ja, wenn Sie uh, Mitglied bei uns werden möchten, uh, gibt es Mitgliedsanträge, wir wären da sehr dankbar dafür, oder wenn Sie anderweitig Spenden an uns geben möchten. Um, zuallererst möchte ich mich uh, bei der Stadtbücherei bedanken, uh, die uns heute uh, diesen Raum zur Verfügung stellt und eben auch uh, die Bar geöffnet hat, sodass wir mit Getränken versorgt werden und hier nicht alle zu Tode uh, schwitzen. Um, so, first of all, thank you uh, for the library, um, for, for, for this room today and opening the bar for us uh, where we can get refreshments. And of course, thank you for all uh, our volunteers uh, for uh, make, making this event happen. Um, so please give a, a hand for the Stadtbücherei and the volunteers of the DA. Uh, bitte einmal alle klatschen für die Stadtbücherei und die Helfer. Um, so, uh, worüber wir heute sprechen, um, sind uh, die Angriffe auf, uh, uh, jetzt habe ich das deutsche Wort für Enlightenment Movement, äh, Aufklärungsbewegung, äh, für, die, für die Aufklärung, äh, und äh, äh, wird angegriffen von Faschisten von verschiedenen Seiten oder auch äh, von verschiedenen Religionen. Ähm, und es ist wichtig, dass wir die nicht die einen bekämpfen, indem, indem wir die anderen äh, Feinde stärken. Ähm, man kann äh, kritisch gegenüber dem Islam sein und trotzdem die AfD doof finden, äh, auch wenn das manchmal nicht so aussieht. Um, so there's uh, many threats to the Enlightenment at the moment, uh, from fascists, from different side or from religions. Um, and it's important that we do not empower one of the enemies when we fight the other enemies. Um, so you can be critical, for example, of Islam and the AfD at the same time. Uh. So how is this uh, evening uh, uh, organized? Um, so before we have Armin Nawabi, um, let me explain to you how this event will go. Um, Armin will give his talk. Um, then we'll have a short break where everyone can go to our book table 
and sign up or give donations um, or go to the bar to have uh, some more drinks and afterwards uh, we'll have a question and answer sessions where uh, all of you or uh, all of our viewers online we're streaming this event live on Facebook um, so if our quest, uh, viewers online have some questions they can ask them and we'll try to answer them as well um, so, also zuerst, ähm, nachdem Armin sein, seinen Vortrag gehalten hat, ähm, wird es eine kleine Pause geben. Da können dann alle nochmal Getränke nachkaufen ähm, oder sich an unserem Büchertisch mit Flyern informieren und Bücher kaufen. Ähm, und danach gibt es dann eine Frage- und Antwortrunde. So, now to the main event. Uh, who is Armin Nawabi? Uh, our guest speaker today. Um, he was born in Iran, is now living in Canada. Um, he's an ex-Muslim and the founder of Atheist Republic, the largest Facebook group for atheists with over two million followers. Um, together with his co-host Ali Rizvi, um, he also has a podcast called Secular Jihadist, which I can recommend very much. I listen to pretty much every episode. Um, he's also written a book called Why There Is No God, uh, which is available on Amazon. Um, he usually gets attacked from many sides, from the left, from the right, from Islamists, uh, and today he's going to tell us uh, in his topic how to fight Islam without fighting Muslims. <coughs> I'll explain first in German again, and then you... You forgot, most, most recently Hindus. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't have enough enemies yet, <laughs> so you're making enemies, new enemies all the time. Um, so, äh, wen wir heute zu Gast haben, ist Armin Nawabi. Äh, Armin Nawabi ist im Iran geboren, wohnt jetzt in Kanada. Er ist äh, jetzt Ex-Muslim und der Gründer von Atheist Republic, äh, einer der größten atheistischen Facebook-Gruppe mit über zwei Millionen äh, Likes. Und äh, zusammen mit seinem äh, Partner äh, Ali Rizvi hat er einen Post Podcast, äh, Secular Jihadists, und er hat auch ein Buch geschrieben, Why There Is No God, warum es keinen Gott gibt, ähm, das man auf Amazon kaufen kann. Ähm, er äh, sammelt fleißig Feinde äh, von rechts, von links, von Islamisten, von Hindus. Äh, und heute äh, wird er uns erzählen, äh, wie man äh, gegen die Idee des Islam äh, sein kann, ohne, gegen, ohne gleichzeitig gegen Muslime zu sein. Please welcome everyone, Armin Nawabi. All right, so before I get into the way we, I suggest we attack Islam while defending Muslims, I just want to just put something out of the way. I think most people understand that there's a difference between Islam and Muslims, and I we have already talked about that for a long time, and I know there's still some confusion about that. People are like, oh, if you're anti-Islam, you must be anti-Muslim, or people that, so, but I'm not going to spend m much time here. I'm hoping that most people here understand the difference between being against an ideology versus being bigoted against a certain group of people. Mostly, I want to focus on the strategies that we have and why we have them, and what people what our critics say against us. I try, I, I'll try to steel man them as much as possible, but if, if you don't think I'm bringing up the best arguments against what I'm saying, bring it up in the Q&A. Um, so, <coughs> let me translate oh. in German. Um, so, uh, worum es heute geben, gehen wird, ist eben, uh, welche Strategien man, uh, es gibt, um tatsächlich gegen den Islam zu kämpfen, ohne gleichzeitig gegen Muslime zu sein. Um, er geht es davon aus, dass wir grundsätzlich wissen, dass es, dass es diesen Unterschied gibt und dass das auch möglich ist. Um, er wird versuchen, die besten Argumente uh, aufzuzeigen. Falls irgendjemand im Raum dann der Meinung ist, es gäbe eigentlich bessere Argumente, könnte, könnte die dann danach vorbringen. Right, so the two, the two strategies that I have when it comes to the way I talk, deal with Islam, right? They are, most people on both sides see it, usually tell me that I'm too extreme, right? And I'm also gonna put people into groups and I know, I understand that this is not, these groups and these labels are not, um, you know, 
universal. There are many people on the left that behave differently, and there are many people on the right that, beha that behave differently, but I'm just talking about general trends. So when it comes to talking about Islam, the way we talk about Islam when we just post articles on our blogs or post on our Facebook page, make podcasts, make YouTube channels, we are extremely aggressive when we, the way we talk about Islam. We don't hold back our punches, and we don't think that we need to hold back punches, given that uh, idea, religions have already experienced a lot of protection against any form of attack. When it comes to countries that are Islamic, they have laws protecting them, and when it comes to countries that they don't have, they're not in power, they they somehow manage to influence culture in a way that people treat them differently from any other groups of ideas. The level of protection that religion enjoys from criticism is is uh, is very high, given that it doesn't have any logical arguments to defend itself. It has to rely on other methods. So that's why that's why when we do attack religion, we do push as much as we can to normalize aggressively attacking religion. But when it comes to individuals, maybe you want to translate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Um, also, was er, es natürlich wird er jetzt äh, einig, einige äh, Verallgemeinerungen machen. Ähm, sowohl nicht alle, die jetzt als links kritisiert, verhalten sich genauso wie, wie er es jetzt beschreibt. Nicht alle, die er als rechts kritisiert, verhalten sich genauso wie er es beschreibt. Ähm, bei den Religionen ist es so, dass sie natürlich schlecht äh, mit Logik sich verteidigen können. Deswegen gibt es üblicherweise Gesetze, äh, die dann die, zum Beispiel die islamistischen Länder äh, haben. Und deswegen ist es auch wichtig, dass wir möglichst aggressiv äh, gegen diese äh, Ideologie vorgehen. So, but when it comes to not criticizing individuals, but when it comes to talking to individuals, like if I'm facing a Muslim face to face, the tone and the method of talking about Islam then completely changes. And I will usually, it's a lot less aggressive, a lot more friendly, a lot more building a relationship first before you talk about Islam. Um, and I don't think these two methods are uh, contradictory. A lot of people think it's contradictory, but I think they actually complement each other very well. But just to give you an example of how ex extreme people find me on both of these positions and why um, usually, again, not always, usually people on the left criticize me for how anti, how aggressively I t talk about Islam, and then people on the right usually criticize me on how aggressively and extremely uh, I defend Muslims and the way they are treated. So, for example, when it comes to Islam, because whenever they, people draw a line, I want to make sure I cross it so to, they don't get the habit of drawing lines for us. Uh, one thing I do, for example, I've done is I, I burned the Quran and I put it on YouTube. And a lot of people, a lot of my even ex-Muslim friends, critics of Islam, think that was too far. When when there was a gay pride parade in Vancouver, I had a sign saying Allah is gay and went to the gay pride parade. And a lot of my anti, uh, a lot of my critics on my side, which are anti-Islam, they think like, I mean, this is too far. This is, this is, you know, maybe hold back a little bit. And I didn't think so. I think, like, are you, are you suggesting gay is an insult? But um, I, when, especially when people say this is the line that you shouldn't cross, that makes me more interested in crossing that line. <laughs> but when it comes to uh, talk about, in the, about Muslims themselves, right? The, go ahead. <laughs> So, aber genauso aggressiv, wie man gegen die Ideologie des Islam äh, ist, ist er genauso extremistisch freundlich äh, gegenüber Muslimen ähm, und äh, das ist nicht widersprüchlich und von generalistisch äh, Linken krieg, ist es dann eher die Kritik, wie aggressiv er gegen den Islam ist und von generalistisch Rechten eher, äh, wie freundlich er gegenüber den Muslimen ist bzw. sie verteidigt, ähm, wenn er zum Beispiel hat er einen Koran verbrannt und das Video auf YouTube gestellt und auf der anderen Seite einer äh, Schwulenparade, sagt man das? Äh, C bei dem, beim CSD äh, ein äh, Allah ist schwul äh, T-Shirt getragen hat und dann jeweils von, den an von, der, von der einen oder der anderen Gruppierung äh, da äh, kritisiert wurde. Okay. So, 
so when it comes to uh, Muslims themselves, we also go out of our way to call out um, against any abuse, any discrimination, any kind of oppression against Muslims as people. We, as an atheist community, we have constantly reported and brought attention to and tried to um, stand against the way, for example, China treats Muslims, the way that India treats Muslims. When it comes to, like, one thing that, it, this makes a lot of my followers, for example, leave me because they think that how could you be against Islam if you're defending Muslims? When, when in Iraq they had these 20-minute kangaroo courts just executing people that they arrested because they thought they were ISIS, even though a lot of them were ISIS members, we actually, we go, went as, we, a lot of people thought this is very extreme because they said, like, Armin, you're now defending ISIS fighters. I'm like, yes, I'm defending ISIS fighters because they're captured, they don't have gun in their hands, and they have no lawyers, their the hearings are bullshit, nonsense, you know, 20 minutes to defend themselves without anybody representing you, and then they're executing them. Of course I'm going to defend ISIS members when they, when this is the way they're treated. Like even when it comes to, if we are, and when it comes to defending terrorists, human rights, obviously if we go that far, we're going to defend every other Muslim's human rights, because that's just an extreme, extreme example. But a lot of people, the one thing I say, that a lot of anti-Islam activists think is too far on the other side is that whenever there's a suicide attack, when they count the victims, I always think there's usually they can't, they, there's one number that they're not counting. There's usually one number short because they don't count the suicide bomber himself or herself because we count that person as a victim himself because again, the reason why we're against Islam is not just because what it does to non-Muslims, mostly because we're the reason why we get, we are against Islam is mostly because what it does to Muslims. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, then it verteidigt auch eben die Menschenrechte von zum Beispiel Islamisten, wenn zum Beispiel uh, im Irak uh, gegen angebliche ISIS-Kämpfer uh, uh, Gerichtsverfahren gemacht werden, die dann irgendwie nach fünf Minuten vorbei sind und die dann exekutiert werden, auch wenn viele davon tatsächlich uh, ISIS uh, fight, uh, Kämpfer, Kämpfer sind, haben die trotzdem Menschenrechte und das gehört verteidigt oder uh, wie China gerade mit uh, seiner muslimischen Bevölkerung umgeht um, und der Grund dafür ist, dass uh, viele Menschen, die unter dem Islam leiden, eben selber auch Muslime sind und auch bei den uh, Selbstmordattentätern, uh, wenn in der offiziellen Bekanntmachung sind die dann immer sozusagen eine Person äh, zu wenig angezeigt unter den Opfern, denn der Selbstmordattentäter ist selber auch eines der Opfer. So, I'm gonna, so that's our position. I'm gonna divide the pushback against this position into what generally comes from the left and then what comes from the right, and then the pushback that we get from Muslims and moderate Muslims and then the more fundamentalist types of Muslims. I'm going to tell you what they will tell, what they will say against me uh, most of the time. Again, this is very, not, it's hashtag not all, but a lot of people on the left, right? So, um, the, and again, I'm trying to represent the sane people on the left, not the insane people on the left, or the right, right? So I'm not going to, I'm trying to assume that they have a basic understanding where I'm coming from, they understand that I don't, when I'm attacking Islam, I'm not attacking Muslims, so they understand that part, right? But they say, for example, the left would say, many people on the left, again, not all. Okay, Armin, yes, I understand that when you attack Islam, you're not generalizing an entire group of people, around two billion people at the same time. I understand that you're not doing that, okay? But you are a useful idiot to the bigots. You are providing the narrative that they need. You are create your fear mongering. You're creating uh, their propaganda for them. And, they, and they're using, you're feeding into the narrative where people become more scared of Muslims and they gives peop more people excuse to oppress them, to attack them, to threaten them. You're helping that, okay? Okay. So, also äh, zum Beispiel die Kritik, äh, die er von, von Linken bekommt, ist, 
ja, wir verstehen, äh, du sagst nicht, dass alle Muslime genauso sind, aber trotzdem, du bist äh, sozusagen ein nützlicher Idiot für die, für die Rechten und sie verwenden dich, um ihre Ideologie weiter zu pushen und äh, damit alle anderen Angst auch wieder vor Muslimen haben. So the term that they use is like these are dog whistles. Some people that say that makes it suggest that even I'm lying that we are we care for Muslims. Uh, they say no, these are you you are just leaving dog whistles. Do you guys know what dog whistles are? Like basically things that the right hears, the alt right again, not I don't wanna group all the right. The alt right hears and they understand that you are you are a bigot and you are pushing the narratives, but you're just hiding it under um, messages that they recognize. And I say Yeah, we are actually using dog whistles because we want to attract bigots. We want to attract bigots because a lot of bigots start following us because they like, oh, these people are anti-Islam. These are my people. And they start following me, so Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Um, and they see like we, we're saying this against Islam, that against Islam. But, again, but then once something happens, like something, the news comes about China, putting one million Muslims in concentration camps. And all of a sudden, we're taking an extreme position against China. And these people are like, wait a second, what the hell? This is not what I, like, this is not what I signed up for. I thought you were anti-Islam. And at this point, most of them leave. They're like, this guy's an idiot. This, I, I didn't think that Armin would say such a thing. But there, some of them stay. Some of them say like, hmm, man, I didn't know. I didn't know somebody so aggressively against Islam could all of a sudden be so angry about how Muslims are treated. I didn't think that we can be anti-Islam and defend Muslim rights at the same time. This is interesting. Some of them stay. And so what we have noticed that the, the ones that stay, at some point they start changing the way they talk about Islam. So they, they get introduced to a new way of looking at something. It could be against idea without hating the people that believe in that idea. Okay, and so the way we st we've noticed is that we, they they blame us for being a gateway to alt right and bigotry. Our experience is that we're doing the exact opposite. Our anti-Islam narrative is attracting bigots, and our pro-Muslim position is actually changing the way some of these bigots think about their positions. So, why do you think? The, the gateway is the only one way. Why don't you, like even if you didn't know that this is what we were observing, did you even consider that maybe we're actually gateway the other way around? Okay, uh, das wird jetzt ein bisschen schwieriger. Um, also, um, dadurch, dass er so viel uh, gegen den Islam sagt, um, uh, zieht das natürlich auch äh, viele, viele Leute mit Vorurteilen an ähm, und das ist auch tatsächlich äh, beabsichtigt, denn ähm, die sagen dann, oh Armin sagt so viel äh, gegen den Islam, wunderbar, da bin ich dabei und irgendwann kommt dann äh, eine Story, äh, wie äh, wenn China Muslime in Konzentrationslager steckt und Armin plötzlich erzählt, äh, gegen China und für die Muslime sich einsetzt. Äh, die meisten sagen dann, oh, was für ein Idiot. Äh, da gehe ich, dem folge ich nicht mehr, aber die, die bleiben, ähm, werden, ähm, werden dann mit der Zeit ähm, ändern ihre Meinung tatsächlich auch ähm, mehr zu der Einstellung, die Armin selber hat. So ungefähr. Another thing that people, many people on the left tell me, like, okay Armin, if you want to have conversation with people, let's say you say, oh, when I talk to them face to face, you're going to be nice and friendly, well, good job, I guess, but who's going to talk to you if you burn their whole these Scripture. Who's going to want to talk to you if you go insult their prophet? Who's going to want to talk to you if you go insult their God? Uh, maybe you would be able to have more conversations with people if you weren't this aggressive ag against the things that they love and hold sacred. Uh, yeah, you would think that. But it's actually the other way around. The nicer, the more passive they are, the less people are interested in talking to you. I, when, when, when I burned the Quran, when I went and had the Allah is gay sign, my inbox was flooded with Muslims wanting to talk to me. So our experience is that, no, you, you would think that people don't want to talk to you if you're aggressive against Islam. I have had more friendly conversations with Muslim as a result of being aggressively against Islam. Okay, genauso gibt es äh, auf der anderen Seite Leute, die sagen, oh, wenn du so aggressiv gegenüber den Islam äh, bist, dann will sich 
kein Muslim mehr mit ihr unterhalten und er hat genau die gegenseitige äh, Erfahrung gemacht, dass nachdem er den Koran verbrannt hat oder nachdem er äh, Allah ist schwul getragen hat, äh, war äh, sein Posteingang voll mit äh, Anfragen mit, von, von Muslimen, die sich mit ihm unterhalten wollten. So, moving on to what people on the right have against my positions. What, what mostly comes down to it, there's a lot of different things that say, but most of them at the end of it comes down to them saying like, Armin, I understand that Islam is not Muslim and Muslim is not Islam. But at the end of the day, people are responsible for the things that they believe in and the things that they're spreading. If you're this much against Islam, you are, when you are friendly with Muslims, you know, when you're promoting Muslims, when you are um, advocating for being nice to Muslims, you are basically making excuses for, for a group of people that are spreading, knowingly and unknowingly, spreading dangerous, barbaric, violent ideas. Um, you are, have separated Muslim from Muslim so much that you, it seems like you don't think people are accountable for what they believe in and what they, what they spread. Okay, genauso gibt es ähm, weiter dann auch eben äh, von Rechten, die dann kritisieren, okay, ja, du kritisierst nur den Islam und nicht die Muslime, aber wenn du Muslime in Schutz nimmst, schützt du eine Gruppe, ähm, die, ob bewusst oder unbewusst, doch auch die Ideologie des Islam weiter vertreten. So, my response to that would be that, well, at the end of the day, you want to, You, you're worried about Islam, and you want to stop Islam, and you want to start the spread of Islam. And I can tell you, whatever you want, think about holding people accountable, and I have a response to that as well. The thing is that my method works better than whatever you're doing. <coughs> if, if, you think, if you go talk to ex-Nazis, they won't tell you that, you know, yeah, I, I used to be a Nazi, and then somebody came and started shouting at me and say, drop dead, you fucking racist scum. And then I thought like, yeah, I'm gonna stop being a Nazi tomorrow. <laughs> that was an, that was, if you actually follow their stories and listen to what they said, it was that person that sat down with them, talked to them, took them seriously, listened to what they had to say and had a friendly discussion with them. It was usually those people that convinced them out of their ideas, right? And you see, and the other way around, actually, the way that you want us to demonize Muslims and hold them accountable for the ideas that they believe in, this is exactly what makes people hold on to their beliefs even stronger. In fact, not just Islam, religions usually feed on being on victimhood. You know, religious leaders are very smart about this. They know that the more you attack the members of their ideology, the better it is for them. The more, you, the more extremists you're going to create, and the more your ideology is going to spread. Religions feed on victimhood. So, even if you want to hold people accountable for the actions that they, for the things that you believe in, my method just works better. Okay, and. Um das, was er tut, ist einfach das, was funktioniert. Wenn man sich zum Beispiel mit Ex-Nazis unterhält, ähm, stellt man dann fest, die sind nicht überzeugt von Leuten, die sich dann hinstellen und sagen, du bist ein Rassist, du bist ein Arschloch. Und dann sagt der Nazi am nächsten Tag, stimmt, ja, jetzt bin ich nicht mehr Nazi. Ähm, sondern äh, Nazis werden davon überzeugt, von, von Leuten, die sich tatsächlich äh, ernsthaft mit ihnen unterhalten ähm, und sich mit ihnen hinsetzen. Ähm, und genauso ist das bei Islamisten auch. Wie, wie, bei, wie bei anderen Religionen, die eher ähm, sich darüber freuen, wenn jemand sie so, so hart kritisiert, weil sie sich dann als, als Opfer darstellen können. And when it comes to Muslims being responsible for spreading and believing in really shitty ideas, I, I, the response I have to that is, you know, I lived in Iran for more than 20 years. Yeah. Um, and I remember we had a Quran. Almost every house had a Quran, except my uncle, which was very nationalistic, anti-Islamic. He had a different book. But most of us, most people had a, a, one copy of the Quran somewhere in their house. And I remember that we did a lot of things with the Quran. We 
kissed it before going on travel. We waved it around our head. We also kissed it before going to the first day of school. We took it out New Year's as for decoration. We did a lot of things with the Quran, but we didn't ever read the Quran. <laughs> <laughs> and and let, I could let me translate that first. Okay. That's funny. Um, so. Um, die 20 Jahre, die er im Iran gelebt hat, äh, fast jeder Haushalt hatte einen Koran ähm, und sie haben ganz viele Sachen mit dem Koran gemacht. So, geküsst, bevor sie den Koran geküsst, bevor sie auf eine Reise gegangen sind oder vor dem ersten Schultag ähm, oder das anderweitig äh, verehrt. Was sie selten mit dem Ge Koran gemacht haben, ist ihn zu lesen. And even even Muslims that read the Quran, a lot of them just recite the Quran. They don't know what it means. They don't care what it means. They just you get actually a lot of brownie points from Allah by just reciting it. You know, most people, most Muslims don't speak Arabic. Only 20% of Muslims speak Arabic, and even the 20% that speak Arabic, they don't really read classical Arabic, and they don't really pay attention to what they're reciting. I know Muslims that have memorized the entire Quran cover to cover. You mention the name of the surah and the verse number and they just tell you the verse. And they're like, okay, what, the, what did that just mean? I'm like, I have no idea. But they have memorized the entire book. Um, and n imagine if, the fact that most Muslims have never read the Quran, think about, if you haven't read the Quran, how many Muslims have read the Hadith? The Hadith is, you know, secondary to the Quran, but that's where the vast majority of Islamic laws and Islamic way of life doesn't come from the Quran. Most of the most of it comes from the Hadith. So, if they haven't even read the Quran, what are the chances of them Muslim bothering to read the Hadith? So, you, basically, you are saying that when you when you look at Muslims, a lot of people think about Muslims as just Muslims, as if they're nothing else other than Muslims, and Given that most Muslims have not been read, read the Quran and read the Hadith, think about the amount of influence that Islam has on their lives and the, the way they live. You know, Muslims are not just like robots where they insert the Quran and just follow the Quran, right? Muslims, just like the rest of us, are influenced by many competing sources of influence, right? The books they read, the podcasts they follow, the YouTube videos that they watch, you know, their parents. Uh, their school. Islam is just a tiny percentage of that, right? So you can't just be like, okay, Muslim, so Muslim follows Islam. It, it's not that simple, right? And when it comes to fighting against Islam, we're not just, it's not a fight between non-Muslims and Muslims. The fight against Islam is a, it's a fight within each individual. It's a fight over influence to reduce, because even if it's a small influence, that influence is a negative influence. We're competing with that influence with better ideas. Okay. Um, weil eben viele der, Menschen, äh, der, der Moslems äh, den Koran nie gelesen haben, ähm, nur 20% äh, können überhaupt Arabisch und selbst die, die Arabisch können, äh, haben, verstehen dann meistens gar nicht, was im, Iran, äh, im Koran eigentlich drinsteht. Ähm, und äh, selbst die, die den Koran komplett auswendig können, können dann zwar äh, alles rezitieren, aber wissen trotzdem nicht, was es eigentlich bedeutet. Ähm, und äh, so wie alle anderen Menschen sind Muslime auch Menschen, die von vielen verschiedenen Dingen beeinflusst werden. Der Islam ist eine dieser Dinge. Ähm, und äh, wir, bzw. Armin, äh, sozusagen versucht, diesen schlechten Einfluss zu reduzieren, indem man mit zusätzlichen guten Ideen das bekämpft. So if you want to fight that fight within an in individual rather than fighting it outside, Muslim versus non-Muslim, you have to first get in. And to get in, you have to get somebody to drop their guard. Or else you're not going to be able to fight that ideological battle with it inside their head. Right? If you want to compete against the influence of Islam within an individual to introduce competing better values than Islam, you have to really be invited in. So that's why I say the best way to fight Islam is to befriend Muslims. And the example I give to a lot of you know, people on the right, again, not all right, you know, a lot of people might get angry every time I say this. Like, people are like, oh, you think all right-wing people are bigots? No, I'm just saying this generally comes from right, okay? The example I give is like, for example, imagine Christians. How many Christians believe that women should be in no position of authority, that they should never be able to teach, and they should just say silent. 
Not that many Christians think like that. Most Christians I've met do not believe. If, if I meet a random Christian, I think like, do you think women should be allowed to teach? The odds are they're going to like, yeah, of, of, what? Of course women should be allowed to teach. But it's in the Bible that they shouldn't be allowed to teach. So if you can understand that in Christianity we have the Bible that teaches you that women should be, shouldn't be able to have any position of authority or teach, and most Christians don't believe in that, then why is it so hard to believe that most Muslims are better than Islam? Most Christians are better than Christianity, and most Muslims are better than Islam. Most Muslims don't want to kill me as an apostate. I, I left Islam. Most Muslims don't uh, think women should be able to be captured for slavery in war. Most women don't, most Muslims don't think wife beating is okay, even though it's a Quranic verse. Okay. Um. Und um in den, die einzelne Person zu überzeugen, muss man eben äh, in die Köpfe rein. Und deswegen sagt Armin, der beste Weg, um den Islam zu bekämpfen, ist, äh, mit sich äh, Freundschaften mit Muslimen äh, zu schließen. Ähm, um dann eben die Gedanken im Kopf des einzelnen Moslems zu bekämpfen. Und genauso wie es äh, Christen gibt, ähm, die besser sind als die Ideen des Christentums, gibt es genauso Muslime, die besser sind als die Ideen des Islam. Okay, so now moderate Muslims, right, what would they say against me? They're like, okay, Armin, yeah, from your perspective, you are attacking an ideology and not Muslims. But for us, do you understand how much we love Muhammad? Do you understand when you insult Muhammad how much you're personally hurting us? Think about, and this is the examples that they get. I think they all have, the, the ones that are serious, they all have the same source because they all give the same example. They're like, imagine if I came and insulted your mom or drew a sexual cartoon about your mom and just spread it everywhere. Wouldn't you be hurt? Wouldn't, you, wouldn't that um, make you sad? But well, for us, Muhammad is more precious. We love Muhammad more than we love our own mothers. So imagine that times a hundred, and that's why you shouldn't do these things. If you actually care about people, you wouldn't do something like that. Okay, ähm, jetzt die Kritik der moderaten Muslime, die dann zum Beispiel sagen, wir, wir moderaten Muslime, wir, wir lieben Mohammed. Ähm, und stell dir doch mal vor, wir würden deine Mutter beleidigen oder einen äh, sexuellen Cartoon mit deiner Mutter zeichnen, ähm, da wärst du auch beleidigt. Und wir lieben Mohammed noch viel mehr als unsere Mütter. Um, und um, deswegen kann, damit du das verstehst. So, to that say, okay, yeah, you know, that's a very good example. And, you know, if I, if I was, like, insulting Muhammad or saying something mean about him or if, uh, drawing cartoons about him, and my goal was just to hurt you, just to make you feel offended, I would, I would be an asshole, like if that was the only thing I was trying to do, like that's sadistic, why would I do that? And they're like, yeah, exactly, why would you do that? I'm like, okay, but let me, let me fix your example to make it more closer to what we're doing. Let's say your mother was a politician, and she's passing laws, and she's influencing our lives in many ways. Um, in that situation, we know, I think it's fair for us to criticize your mom, the cartoonist to draw a picture about your mom, you know, like to, to, to criticize her policies and stuff like that. Because it's, she's not just your mom anymore. She's somebody that is doing something that influences all of, of our, all of our lives. But then, but then we, let's go one step further. Let's say your mom decides that she doesn't like all these people criticizing her and she doesn't like all the you know, comedians talking about her. So she tries to pass a law to make it illegal for us to criticize her or make jokes about her. Now in that situation, now things got worse. Now we actually have to go out of our way to criticize your mom and make cartoons about her because we want to make sure that such lines are not drawn from us, for us. We want to make sure that anybody trying to limit what we can say and express backfires on them a hundred times. And you know, when we, in this situation, when we're criticizing our mom, you being upset about it is not the goal. It's just an unfortunate byproduct. We don't want to make people to offend it for no reason. But she's now just more than, your, now she's way more than your mom. And is more is at stake here than you being offended. Okay. Um, Armin dann sagt, 
ja, wenn ich äh, Cartoons nur deswegen zeichnen würde, um deine Mutter zu beleidigen, dann wäre er ein Arschloch. Aber, äh, um das ein bisschen realistisch das zu machen, äh, die Analogie, äh, muss man sich vorstellen, die Mutter wäre eine Politikerin. Und dann ist es eben nicht mehr nur die Mutter, äh, sondern eben eine Politikerin, die man kritisieren darf, wie alle anderen Politiker auch. Oder wenn diese Politikerin dann versucht, ein Gesetz zu erlassen, dass sie nicht mehr kritisiert werden darf, dann wäre es umso wichtiger, ähm, das zu kritisieren. One example that I use to make this clear to Muslims is that imagine a Muslim that hates atheism, wants to attack atheism, wants to destroy atheism, and she's a activist 24-7 YouTube podcast goes out protest atheism is the main thing that she's worried about and she wants to end the rise of atheism um, but the reason why she is worried about atheism and she hates atheism is because she cares for atheists because she thinks that atheists are going to go to hell and burn forever and it's not she's against atheism not because she hates atheists She's against atheism because she cares for atheists and she, she's worried for atheists and she wants to save them from torture, from hellfire. You can see, in, that's not something I believe in, but you can see in that example what, how somebody could be against atheism but not against atheists. And they say, yeah, I can see how that could be possible. Or like, okay, so you see how somebody could be against Islam and not, and not against Muslims. And even if you think like, Our position against Islam is, you know, unjust or wrong and ridiculous. Just please always put yourself in our position because if you understand where we're coming from, because for us Islam is extremely harmful. We think Islam is extremely harmful and it's a danger to, to society and to the world. And even if we're wrong, even if we're wrong, and you're right, and Islam is the best thing that has ever happened, if you understand our position, you would be able to, you know, we, we would be able to have better conversations rather than you think, rather than if you, than in a position that you misunderstand us and think we're just coming at you for offending you and hurting you. Even if we're wrong, understanding our position will lead us, both of us, to have better conversations with each other. Okay. Um, und Angenommen, diese Mutter äh, oder hat jetzt, äh, kämpft gegen Atheisten nicht, weil sie Atheisten doof findet, sondern äh, weil sie befürchtet, dass Atheisten ja alle in die Hölle kommen. Und das sozusagen, äh, sie will denen ja nur helfen. Und genauso kann man sich das vorstellen, äh, wie man gegen den Islam sein kann, ähm, sozusagen ohne gegen Muslims zu, Mus Muslime zu sein, ähm, weil wir der Meinung sind, Islam ist was Schlechtes und wir müssen dagegen vorgehen. Und selbst wenn äh, wir Atheisten äh, nicht recht hätten und Islam ist das tollste seit geschnitten Brot, ähm, weiß, kann, man, kann man vielleicht dann trotzdem besser nachvollziehen, dass wir nicht den Islam kritisieren, weil wir Arschlöcher sind, sondern weil wir der Meinung sind, dass Islam einfach was Schlechtes ist. So these, by the way, these Muslims that I'm talking about are the more moderate ones. Uh, the fundamentalist Muslims will take a different position, but these are Muslims that care about their fellow Muslims being oppressed, discriminated against, um, the mistreatment of Muslims. If you go a little bit more on the fundamentalist side, you will see more Muslims that don't really care about that much. Mo they care more about Islam itself rather than Muslims. But to the Muslims that care about their fellow Muslims, um, I say, you know, if that's what your priority is, then realize that it's better to be offended than to be discriminated against. Because as much as we might offend you, but anyway, if you get offended, you have chosen to be offended because we don't come to you. If you see our content, you have came to us. We don't come, po when we post our content on our Facebook pages, on our YouTube channels, in our books, on our websites, you found our content. You, you came to us, so you chose to be offended. But even if you got offended by accident, you know, maybe adjust your fa Facebook feed to see what you like, but even if you got offended by us, it's better, you have to see that our position is to also defend Muslims. When they, we will fight and challenge your ideas, but we also fight people that challenge your rights. And you should, 
you know, anti people who are going to hate Islam, people are going to be against Islam. But don't you want the people that are against Islam to be also the pe the the people that defend your rights? Don't you want among all the people that hate Islam for our kind of anti-Islam activism to be front and center so that we show all the people that are anti-Islam that they also don't have to hate Muslims while doing it? Isn't, I mean, you can try to stop making people hate Islam, but if that fails, don't you want them to have our brand of being anti-Islam? Okay, um, the fundamentalistic Muslims who then on the side come, Uh, von, von Armin Awabi oder von Atheist Republic, ähm, den muss man dann sagen, aber ihr seid auf unsere Seite gekommen, wir posten nur auf unsere Facebook-Seite, wir posten auf unsere Webseite, wir posten in unseren Twitter-Feed, ähm, ihr seid, ihr habt uns gefunden, nicht wir haben euch gesucht. Ähm, und äh, selbst wenn du jetzt beleidigt bist, ähm, findest du es nicht besser, äh, Islamkritiker zu haben, die so sind wie wir, die sich gleichzeitig für eure Menschenrechte einsetzen und nicht Islamkritiker, äh, die euch auch noch alle umbringen wollen. Sondern sozusagen, wenn, es schon nicht, wenn ihr es nicht schafft, äh, alle Islamkritik äh, niederzumachen, wollt ihr es dann nicht lieber haben, dass, die, dass wir die Mehrheit der Islamkritiker sind, die die Hauptislamkritiker sind, weil wir gleichzeitig noch für eure Menschenrechte sind. So that was a modern Muslim, right? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Das waren die moderaten Muslime. No, okay. okay. But when you, now we go to fundamentalist Muslims, right? So the fundamentalist Muslims say like, I mean, I don't care that you defend Muslims. Okay? You're attacking Islam. I don't care, you know, the Islam is more important than Muslims. You know, you're, I, they say for the fundamentalist ones, again, not all fundamentalists, but this con if somebody says this, they're more likely on the fundamentalist side. So like, I am against, I mean, I'm against you more than the bigots more than the people that kill Muslims. I'm against you more than the people, more than China that put Muslims in concentration camps. Because the bigots, the white supremacists, the racists, they are hurting Muslims in this life. You are risking Muslims' eternal life. You are bringing Muslims out of Islam. You have made many people become ex-Muslim. And that is worse than killing, torturing, and oppressing Muslims. Die fundamentalistischen Muslime, die haben noch eine andere Kritik. Ähm, die sagen dann, Amen, das Problem ist nicht, dass äh, uns ist praktisch egal, dass du für die Menschenrechte von, von Muslimen eintrittst. Du bist gegen den Islam. Und das ist viel schlimmer als äh, die Nazis oder äh, wer auch immer, der die Muslime der, der Muslime aktiv tötet, denn was die tun, ist nur die Muslime in diesem Leben zerstören. Was du tust, ist das ewige Leben dieser Muslime zu zerstören. Du sorgst dafür, dass die Ex-Muslime werden, und das ist viel schlimmer als alles, was die Rassisten oder sonst was tun. I say, okay, fine, then fight atheism, and then let me tell you the best way is to fight atheism, right? Because we have a lot of experience fighting ideas, and we have experience that fighting ideas works best if we are befriending each other and have civil conversations with each other. So if you think I'm a threat, the best way to attack this threat is to talk to me, right? And talk to, uh, in fact, if you talk to me, I will give our discussion to all of our audience. I will give you the world's largest atheist community, and everything you say and everything you promote will, I'll post it everywhere. I'll send it out to the newsletter, our YouTube channel, our Facebook page. Let's have a conversation. You think this is a threat? It, it doesn't matter if we think these, our ideas are a threat because, uh, you know, we don't, we don't, Even if you win some atheists to your side, if you manage to convert atheists to Muslims, if the, if, the, if the atheists are not being attacked, if the atheists are not being oppressed, if the atheists are not being demonized for being atheists, congratulations, here, convert an atheist to Islam. The main point is that we're having civil conversations, we're having friendly conversation, and it's not turning into anything violent or aggressive or unfriendly. We, we can show people that it's possible. And let's have conversation and make the best ideas win. Okay, dann sozusagen, lieber Fundamentalist, ähm, also dann musst du also den, den Atheismus bekämpfen und äh, kann dir sagen, der beste Weg, den Atheismus zu bekämpfen, ist, mit ihm zu reden. 
Und äh, Armin stellt dann äh, den Islamisten die Möglichkeit, äh, mit, mit ihm zu reden und äh, das wird dann an alle, zum Beispiel Atheist Republic Anhänger, äh, weitergesendet. So, dann kannst du ganz viele Atheisten äh, zum Islam bekehren. Das sollte doch dann dein Ziel sein. Two last points I want to make. Is one is, we don't, as much as I keep advocating for being friendly to Muslims, I want to make it clear that when it comes to the idea itself, there is no excuse for Islam. No ideas, no set of ideas that would promote slavery, that would promote wife beating, that would promote the killing of apostates just simply because they changed their mind, that would suggest that people are worthy of eternal torture simply because they didn't believe in the book. Any set of ideas that was promoting these and wasn't being labeled a religion, people wouldn't be making excuses for it. People wouldn't be making tolerant we're making uh, arguments that we need to tolerate it. These ideas would die. These ideas would die if it wasn't branded as a religion. And if you don't make excuses for any set of ideas like this outside of religion, you shouldn't be making excuses for it if it's a religion. Genau. Aber um eben ganz klar zu machen, ähm, Islam hat so viele schlechte Ideen, ob es jetzt äh, Frauen schlagen oder Leute ermorden, weil sie vom Glauben abgefallen sind. Ähm, wir würden keine Ausreden dafür finden, wenn es keine Religion wäre. Wir sollten auch keine Ausreden, Ausreden dafür finden, nur weil es jetzt eine Religion ist. Okay, last point. So when it comes to what we what we're trying to do and what we've accomplished, we have we have managed to convert, deconvert thousands of people out of um, Islam and other religions. But more than that, so if you think about it, there's a small circle and then there's a bigger circle of people that are still Muslim, still Christian, still whatever, but they have doubts. They're just like not that sure anymore. Like maybe, maybe I don't know. Like you know, they're still Muslim, and that that seed of doubts is very important. You know, no one's gonna dedicate their entire life to something that they're only 99% sure about. No one is gonna do something very aggressive or something very stupid about something that they're not 100% certain that it's true. So even though some people have completely given up on a complete, you know, came out of Islam. That doubt, that seed of doubt is very important, and that's a much bigger number even than the people that, even though the first number is big, the second number is even bigger. But then a bigger circle than both of these is people that are saying like, listen, I mean, I'm still 100% certain that Islam is true. But I see why some people are against it. And I'm, you know, I don't, you're wrong, you're stupid, you're ridiculous, obviously Islam is true. But, you know, I don't hate you. you. You seem okay. Do what you do. Inshallah, one day you become Muslim or something. You see that. But, but just they accept you, okay? They, they still think 